So I remember when I was first studying Ayurveda and then now having been at the Kapala School of Ayurveda for years, ghee is always a subject that is um, celebrated because the texts are so clear about it being this, you know, maybe the most rejuvenative food that you could eat. And the answer about whether it's right for you is always that it depends on your, your current uh, you know, capacity to digest it and your constitution, etc. So it's a little better for folks that are more influenced by vata and pitta in their constitution, but nonetheless, it, it has this kind of, um, has this special category that's given to it. And I'm such a science nerd that at some level I understood, and at another level I didn't understand until now which is to say that in just recently, like in the last year and a half, they've identified a new essential fatty acid. That's the first essential fatty acid identified in 90 years. So all the omega-3 and 6s were identified in 90 years ago. And this new one is called pentadecanoic acid. And it is deemed essential because we don't make it. We have to acquire it from food. And, um, and it is something too that is actually produced in very small amounts, primarily in dairy products. And so it's a saturated fat. So it's different than the omegas, very different. It's an odd chain saturated fat with 15 carbons. And um, I've seen comparisons of its influences on our body's physiology compared to some of the main longevity um, you know, uh, medications out there like rapamycin or metformin, and it, it actually surpasses everything that is seen as a longevity promoting um, you know, substance because it has such a broad, pervasive influence. And so now when you combine this with the fact that over the last, really since the 70s, so it's been more than 50 years, that there's been a sort of an awareness that too much saturated fat can really lead to certain kinds of problems. And a lot of that research was skewed because of some corruption of the Harvard studies that made um, fat look like the villain back in the 50s and 60s when in fact those, the, the sugar industry was, was uh, bribing the, the, the scientists to make those, those conclusions. You can look that up. It's a very big uh, you know, accusation, but you can look it up. It's true. And so anyway, they, the, as people have started to eat less dairy, especially full fat dairy, and more, less foods that have a lot of saturated fat, there's been one problem with that, which is that people are getting less of this essential fatty acid, and they even have a name for a syndrome that comes up when you're missing that, or it's at low levels. It's called cellular fragility syndrome. And that's because the, the pentadecanoic acid literally plays a role in strengthening your cell membranes. And all the long-lived animals, think humans, elephants, certain birds and reptiles, will have saturated fats as a key part of their cell membranes because it makes the cell membrane more impervious to oxidation and breakdown and attack and injury. Um, and so, so it turns out that it looks like the pentadecanoic acid plays a role in literally strengthening your cells from, from a structural standpoint, but it also plays a role in regulating very, very important uh, immune functions and the infl inflammatory processes that are regulated by the immune system, regulating blood sugar, lung health, heart health, and one of them is my, my personal favorite, is to impact uh, an enzyme that helps to remove zombie cells. And so a zombie cell is a cell that actually accumulates in the body where it's no longer serving a function, but the body hasn't eliminated it. And that is, and it causes problems for being around because the body would prefer to eliminate it or the cell. And, and basically what is going on there is if the body is too busy dealing with leaky gut or toxic air or mycotoxins or um, other kind of insults and attacks on the body's health, 
it will have to apportion energy to protecting itself before it can get to other things. And so the zombie cells can accumulate because the body doesn't have a chance to do the repair, do the growth, do the rejuvenation that it really wants to do. And so part of doing that is to clean house and get things ready so it can. And so it turns out that this pentadecanoic acid, that's one of the things it does as well, is to actually really empower the body's ability to rejuvenate. So. Suffice to say, you can check out the article that we wrote for the, you know, for uh, about ghee and how to make ghee. But the the highest source of pentadecanoic acid in a food form comes from butter and ghee. The issue with butter would be you would need about a tablespoon of butter or a tablespoon of ghee to get your daily dose of. Um, pentadecanoic acid. You can also find it abundantly in certain kinds of hard cheeses like pecorino, especially if you get a one that's made with goat or sheep and those goat and sheep have been grass fed and grazing on healthy stuff. That's another place that it's very found, you know, in, in a rich supply. Generally, um, though, your best, your best sources by far are butter or ghee. But the beauty of ghee in the way that um, Ayurveda, you know, blows me away, again, having nailed the fact that there's this essential nutrient that comes in a concentrated form in ghee, and that's why we recommend using a grass-fed, cultured version of ghee if at all possible, because it because it is concentrating certain elements. If you have a, a you know a, a product, a butter or milk product that is um, tainted or impure, it can concentrate the impurities as well. So a grass-fed, cultured ghee, organic ghee is is the gold standard there. Um, and you take about a tablespoon of that a day, that's the sweet spot. That's where you're going to be getting just the right amount to um, supply you with about 100 milligrams. There's one, there's one supplement out in the market called Fatty 15, F-A-T-T-Y 1-5, which is a reference to being a fatty acid and it's a, it has 15 carbon, so fatty15.com. And they're giving their dosage per day is, is 100 milligrams. So if somebody had issues with lipids, you could take the supplement, or if it's just easier for you and you have the, the income, you, can, you, could, you could pay more and get it in that form. But there's a lot to be said about grass-fed cultured ghee because it's not just the, the, the decapentanoic acid that's in there. Uh, serving you. It's also things like butyric acid, conjugated linoleic acid, all of the major fat soluble vitamins. And so this is one more comment is that when you look around the world, the idea of, of eating vegetarian, of course, can take on its most purified form in, in, as veganism. But what you find around the world is there's not very many vegan cultures. There's places like South India, which is a perfect example because they do consume ghee and they worship cows and they honor them, is that they have an almost pure vegetarian diet, but they include yogurt and ghee. And the benefit of that, the, the main things that are missing in a vegan diet are going to be fat-soluble vitamins. And so that's A, D, E, K. And then you get some other things like vitamin B12 and the essential fatty acids, the other essential fatty acids like omega-3 and um, that are not abundantly present in that diet in a way that can be assimilated to give you ample for what you need. Um, that so they're so looking at that, they're 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 only non-veg foods sometimes are ghee and fresh milk and and yogurt. And that actually could be enough to supply some of these really essential nutrients that come in a fat soluble form. And so I um, wanted to add a little bit to, you know, to the to the article that we wrote and um, hopefully inspire you to um, to consider, especially if you're kind of feeling like you want to try it, you know, something's just a little bit amiss and uh, that you could either, uh, you know, obtain this essential nutrient from having a, a high quality ghee or you could supplement it but it can be a real game changer especially if you're in the say post 50 crowd where aging starts to become something um, that's more uh, more real and I'm, I'm in that crowd now so I'm starting to think more about these things but I love this kind of science because when Ayurveda is sort of proven in such a beautiful way where the texts are are celebrating this thing and you're wondering why are these why are they so hung up on ghee but 
because they knew, because they knew that it was providing this, this beautiful, beautiful um, digestible method of nourishing ourselves. So for what that's worth, I um, hope you are nourished and loved and, um, and that you benefited from this.